Every day, we rise, challenging ourselves to work for what we believe in. At U.S. Border Patrol, protecting our borders is more than a job. It's a calling. Agents answer the call, working together to keep our country and communities safe. If you are ready for a new mission, join U.S. Border Patrol and go beyond. Learn more at cbp.gov slash careers. As the door of the gray house shuts behind Francoise de Vigne and Joël stands silently gazing after his new friend, the door of another house near the Palais Royal is shut also. Over this second door hangs a dark and ancient sign creaking mournfully in the night wind. On it is painted a small blackamoor blowing an enormous trumpet. This is the inn of the Moorish trumpeter. And the door has been closed sadly but firmly by its proprietor, Master Bonaventure Bonlaron. He looks at the tables and benches, worn smooth with use but now empty, at the copper and pewter twinkling at him from the wall, and the mutton turning on the spit. He looks at Bistoke, his waiter, and sighs a long, sad sigh. Uh, alas, the golden days are gone, and the Moorish trumpeter is as empty as my heart since I gave up soldiering. Yes, it was a sad day for the trumpeter when the late king issued his edict against dueling. I tell you, be okay, the meals I'd serve in those days. Why, why, you'd hardly believe it, boy. After a riot, I'd dish up my mutton to the survivors, and they'd wash it down with the best from my cellars. Uh, but now, look at it. Burnt to a crisp for want of customers. Oh, I suppose we'll have to eat it ourselves. Dish it up now while I put up the shutters and bar the door. The day is gone. We'll wait no longer. Oh, hail, and host and company. Are you quite well? So glad. I feel that way myself. Which noble lord is the proprietor of this casa, as the Italians say? Oh, uh, I, my gentleman. Stop every day, but what he may be the customer all the same. Uh, this way, my lord. Uh, be seated, good sir. Gentlemen, you see before you the prodigal son. I am a son of Paris who returns to his native city. The unrivaled, the inimitable. This is my home. In my youth, the very birds picking up crumbs on the pavement. You, Renaud Fiquet. Oh, we're well, 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 delighted to welcome you back then, my master. I was a choir boy in the cathedral and a wine drawer in the Rue de Calandre. But now I am on the high road to fortune. I have not travelled and warred over half the world not to know a thing or two. Though I am a Parisian, I can see further than my own belfries, I warrant you. Oh, yes, yes, we can see that your lordship is no ordinary man. Little Fiquet, they call me. As if a man must be a giant to live well. Well, that king himself is no taller than I, despite the high heels on which he totters round. But let us not discuss royalty. Let me rather talk of myself, though that is repugnant to my delicacy. But I'm not the man to acquaint the whole world with my affairs. Oh, indeed, no, sir. That is perfectly obvious. Suffice it, my gentlemen, to say that I come with a recommendation to the Minister of the Navy and 50 pistols which I owe to the munificence of Lord Cote de Terran, whom I saved from drowning. You see, a man need not be a colossus to achieve great things. So here I stand in need of a good meal and a good bed. Tell me, good gentlemen, are you prepared to supply these to Renault Fiquet? My master, I have the room that will suit your lordship admirably. I take the room. And if your lordship will deign to be content with a fine leg of mutton... I take the mutton, too. You shall see, my friend, that though Parisians are reckoned dainty, I can use a good knife and fork as well as the next. May I not rest here after if I leave you more than the knuckle? Hold hard, friend. I hope you will spare me a little. 
I have come a long way this day and have an appetite in proportion to my size. Truly, the manners of these yokels have not improved during my absence. State your business, sir, and be gone. It was not business that brought me here, but pleasure, I had hoped. Let me remind you, sir, of a saying which so great a traveler and warrior must have heard. It talks of the necessity of charity to your neighbor. And what do you mean by all that, pray? I mean that I, too, have come from afar in quest of lodging and something to eat. I shall not be sorry to share with you the delicacies of this establishment. Each pays his scot, share and share alike. Come now. Are you willing? Bother take you. I ordered that mutton, and I shall keep it. You are not very polite, but I am too hungry to be particular and thirstier than an old nail in a vine stake. Not polite? Get you gone, sir. I was here first, I tell you. If we don't get something in our teeth soon, sir, there'll be nothing left but our swords and daggers, for we'll have eaten each other. Besides, my friend, I cannot think that you expect to consume such a joint as that alone. Why not? Why not, indeed? Because there is a rule against it. What rule? The rule of three. The ability to accomplish the feat must be shown. Ability? Ability? Man, you have insulted me! Lando, you hear? He has insulted me! Oh, uh, fight, beast, okay, you fight. I'll back the giant. Oh, but see, the little one jumps up and down. Yes, you, you have insulted me, but I know whether I am small or not. But I allow none to remark upon it. Perdition! You shall pay for these affronts. The landlord can put it on the bill, then. But think, my friend, think before you act. When we have cut a slash or two in our skin... You seem to be tender about yours. I did not bring a change with me from Brittany. You are afraid? Afraid? I do not know all the words in the Parisian jargon, and so I do not know what you mean. There is an edict against you, a lady. Edict? Who cares for edicts? Ah, man, a fight puts an egg on the appetite. Oh, but you must stop them, master. Stop them? On my soul, boy, I'll fight with them. Quiet now, they have their swords and cheese. Well, slow coat, are you ready? Is it that your sword is too heavy for you? Or do you but put off the evil moment when you crush your sword with mine? In truth, it is hunger that stops me. Come, let us dine first. And fight afterwards. No, no. I eat to fight right now. Death of my life. To it, man. To it. Very well, then. As you say. Oh, the coolness of the young giant. Oh, oh. See, it's okay. See how easily he handles that, that great sword as if it were a skewer. Oh, my bastards. I will cut his throat. And I'll cut yours if you do not keep quiet. You respect him. Oh, such an impetuous little fellow. See, see the swords have entangled up to the hills. Oh, so Goliath retreat. I am not retreating, friend. I am merely breaking free. And in all countries where sword play is a science, to free the blade is part of the game and not a retreat. Ah. Oh, so calm he talks. Like a lecturer instructing his students. And the little fellow, all fire and quicksilver. Oh, fall oh, plague on it, but the Breton is but fooling. Child's play it this way, this is no fight. Horns of a fiend, you are fooling with me. There is no doubt of it, sir. If I really let myself go, you'd be spitted like the leg of mutton. I'll not be played with in this session. This must be ended now. I ask for nothing else, for truly I am as hungry. I am hungry to the tip of my toes. Oh, now they're fighting. Oh, see, see, he faints and perish. Oh. Uh, settle me. Kill me, Huffrack. I am at your mercy. But do not disarm me. If I were to kill you, my friend, we should not dine together. And my pleasure would be spoiled. For I look forward to your sprightly company. Here is your sword, friend. Take it, and let us eat like comrades. Do not draw back now from the feast for which you fought so valiantly. Oh, what a fight! What swordsmanship! Such courage on both sides! 
Well, well, don't goggle there, be okay. Come set the table, boy. For two, for two, good lad. No, three, landlord. For you shall join us, too. We shall eat together. Oh, come, my friend. Do not stand so silent and ashamed. It was a valiant fight. My master, I was wrong. I have behaved like a curmudgeon in picking this quarrel with you instead of merely picking that bone. Will you let this pass and be my friend? With the greatest of pleasure, and here's my hand upon it. Now, let us give our minds to eating, for fencing within four walls wondrously sharpens the appetite, as our host said. And my hunger is big enough for an army and not one single man. Fighting may whet the appetite, but food and drink certainly loosen the tongue. And we have had our fill of food and wine and talk. Ah, uh, good food makes good friends, Master. And we are good friends indeed, for we've all told our stories. Joel looks for a name, I've come to make a fortune, and you, mine host, rule the day you laid down your sword and took up the apron of an innkeeper. Though we have reason to be thankful for it, truly. Were it not for your good wine and food tonight, I would have starved. Oh, such an appetite as yours, my master, makes cooking worthwhile. I'd be proud to be of service to such a one. Uh, and I can be of further service, too. At least I believe so. In what way? Uh, these names you mentioned. These three brothers in arms. Aramis, Athos, and D'Artagnan. You know them. One of them. Captain D'Artagnan. Captain Captain D'Artagnan. Captain commanding the two companies of the Reds and Black Musketeers he was. But where do I find him now? Uh, that I cannot tell, monsieur. Since the king moved from Paris to Saint-Germain, I no longer know these things. He may be dead now, though we old soldiers have life riveted to our bodies. One could make inquiries among the musketeers at Saint-Germain. Would any remember D'Artagnan? Remember D'Artagnan? May they never rest hereafter if they forgot such a gallant captain. De Bregui at least should know him. Who is this de Bregui? He's an old musketeer. He must have served under D'Artagnan for 30 more, 30 years or more he's been in the service. He's uh, over fond of the wine cup and whipping out his blade, but he's a great fighter, is de Bregui. And you say he is at Saint-Germain? I shall leave tomorrow. Uh, how long will it take me to get there? Two hours on the good post horse which I will hire you. Good, good. I shall leave in the morning. I'll to de Bregui and be back for Vespers. I must be back by Vespers. There is someone else I wish to see. Son of Porthos. Adapted for radio by Margaret Dunn. From the novel by Alexander Dumas. A George Edwards production.